I'm Tree, and this is Project Transparency. Evidently, my hair is really sentient today. There, is that a little bit better? A little less likely to, like, crawl off my head and attack unsuspecting passerbys. The community calendar. So definitely to peer is Friday from 5 to 8 and I will be at Polito's Pizza again which is actually really good pizza. Those of you from Springfield, Illinois area who, 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 yes, like Lucas, think like Lucas, yes. Next Thursday, the 19th, is gallery night. I'll be at the art garage like I usually am. But yes, come ride the trolley, see the people, do the things. Hello, Lane. Have you thought about the erratic nature of the copy? So last Thursday I saw uh, The Fault in Our Stars. I actually went to The Night Before Our Stars. That's what the little clip is from. Um, I didn't want to do more than like that much of it because, you know, copyright and getting kicked out of the theater and I paid a lot of money to go and I no. But yes, it works very well for any conversation I want to have about the erratic nature of the copy. Erratic, not erotic. Mm. Don't don't listen close. But the uh, erratic not nature of the copy. In art for millennia we have been taught that art is a singular entity that that the original is of most value, that it is the thing of the most import. Thank you, modernism, if nothing else. Especially since contemporary notions of what art is really didn't erupt so much until, you know, modernism. It's kind of like literary fiction. It's a relatively recent development, but we're always told that it's a much longer sort of thing. But literary fiction as a genre is less than 150 years old and everything before that was genre fiction. Just like art before modernism was all about function, whether that be the praise of the divine or, you know, drinking out of the thing or, or being um, early modern selfies. They had purpose, they had reasons, they had function. But then something really interesting happened. And I'm going to use Duchamp as the example. I'm sure he's not the only person, but I'm going to use Duchamp as an example just because he is a snarky little man. And he did things that kind of irritated everybody in the history of ever. But with Duchamp, with postmodernism, we started to get the first idea of the copy. And not a copy as in a forgery, but in a copy as the artist made multiple copies. Copies that were not made by their, their, their little shop apprentices, but actual copies made by the artist. Part of this is because of the rise of the Industrial Revolution, and some of it is mechanical reproduction, which Walter Benjamin threw a massive fit about the idea of the common person, heavily quotationed there, um, having the ability to create photo photographs and to create film like artists did. And Walter Benjamin kind of had a downfall of all things art, and he was wrong. But Duchamp did something similar to mechanical reproduction not throwing the fit. He started to bring everyday objects into the gallery. He took objects out of their everyday functional um, purpose, brought them to the gallery, and they became abject. They, they, they lost their context, and they became something that was purely object and purely form rather than function. And then dude turned around and turned his own pieces into miniatures, stuck them in a salesman case, and took them out of the gallery, out of the studio, out of the museum, and basically 
revolutionized art. Again, not the only person who did the thing, he's just the most well-known, obvious person to have done the thing. And in doing so, he created something that would be the, the, the hallmarks of essentially post-postmodern, quixotic postmodernism, conscientious postmodernism, as per usual, I cannot talk when I'm talking to the camera, which in turn leads to the creations of multiples. And there are always going to be artists who, artists and critics and people in general who say that the copy isn't the original, which it's not, it's a simulacra, um, is not the original and doesn't have the same power and that the copy takes away from the power and the art of the original. They would be vastly, intensely wrong. What happens is that having the multiple changes the aura. The, the copy, whether it's a poster or a t-shirt or a coffee mug or whatever, doesn't lessen the importance of the original. Instead, it increases it. And in being something that everybody can have their hands on, becomes a method by which individual self-creation is involved that me having a copy of um, a poster of the star of Starry Night by Van Gogh, which I do somewhere, it's packed away right now, but I do have a copy of it, um, lets me identify Van Gogh as one of my favorite artists. That his use of color and his use of motion and energy and life and light, despite the, 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 the interior, um, the interior difficulties he had lets me connect in a way that if I could never have seen it as a copy in a book, as on the inter as a copy in a book on the internet or on my wall, I wouldn't have that access. But the copy is important, and the copy doesn't diminish the original, it enhances it. And it has its own aura, its own very different aura that is just as important. So what this has to do with The Fault in Our Stars is that the movie is not the novel, is not the movie. They are individual iterations of the same thought. And neither is wrong. And Neither is right, and they're both important for different reasons. Okay, Elaine, I'll see you later. I'm not sure if that made sense out loud. <laughs>